On Two Wheels this week we return to the International Bike Show to take a look at Honda's new 900 Hornet, the very latest trick scooter from Peugeot and Harley Davidson's new V-Rod, plus Aprilia's Blue Marlin, a new model from Kawasaki and the very latest Honda Fireblade. There's no doubt that this is one of the best V-twin motors around. It's a Suzuki TL1000 power unit used very successfully now by Kajiva in their big Raptor and of course also using their big trail bike, the Navigator. So Suzuki have obviously thought, hey, it's about time we made a bike of our own. We better start using our own engine. So they've launched this, the DL1000 V-Strom. Yes, V-Strom, not V-Storm. It's not a spelling mistake, V-Strom. Strange name, you might think. The V bit, that's obvious, isn't it? It's a V twin engine. Strom is a German word which means power, so it means V power. So it does actually make sense. It's clearly aimed at the giant trailing market and hopefully, well, Suzuki, hopefully it will take some sales from things like Honda's Varadero. It's a completely new bike, obviously the engine we've seen before, but the rest of the bike's new, all the bodywork's new, all the running gear. The frame is brand new, aluminium beam frame. That's never been used in any machine before, so they've designed all that from scratch. And an important point, because of the market it's aimed at is the seat height. It's only 830 millimetres, so it's lower than things like a Varadero, lower than an Africa Twin, considerably lower than things like BMW's giant trailer, their 1150 GS. So it might suit more riders. That might appeal to a few more riders. And when you think it only weighs about 207 kilograms, it should make it nice and manageable. It should be a fairly easy bike to ride. Whether you like the style or not is a matter of opinion, really. It's all down to personal taste. Should be available round about February, March next year, and the guide price at the moment, this is not official, but expect to pay somewhere between £7,200 and £7,500. When uh, step-through scooters became very, very popular, a certain company by the name of Peugeot introduced the Speed Fight. The Speed Fight numero uno, the first version, and it became awesomely popular. Then they improved on it and they produced this, the Speed Fight de number two and they've improved on it. Fantastic, all sorts of luxury features, great little machine. You can buy them for around £1,600 and a little more each time you get nice fancy features. Beautiful colours as you can see and some great innovative ideas. Look at that, it's like a snake lock and it fits in the back there. So you never worry about security on your little machine. They even incorporate immobilisers as well. They've got the job sussed. Colourways, well, you've got the nice subtlety of this, which is plain black, matte black at the front here, very, very smooth, beautiful. Then you go from this sublime to what I might term as the ridiculous. Look at this, it's fantastic. Look at that, it's the 206 WRC. I was led to believe that the 206 WRC had indeed a steering wheel and four wheels. Well, this is a fancy paint job to commemorate the success of the rally team. It's fantastic, you can buy it in a 50cc version like this one for just over £2,000, 200, 2,149 quidlies, or you can pay a little more and have a 100cc version. We had the pleasure of having a go on one of recent and it was great fun. Now I'm sure as you know Triumph have been very very good at adapting their triple engine for all sorts of roles, no difference then with the Bonneville. What they've done with this one is the Bonneville engine, 680cc, 61 brake horsepower, but what they've done is put it in a brand new frame. An incredibly low seat height for any of you out there who like a low seat height, just look at that one, it's just above my knee. Brand new frame, as I say, they've kicked the forks out and they've made the forks look very beefy with these big covers over the top, very sort of Harley-like here. I'm talking about the Harley influence, big separate speedo up the front, chrome headlights, and this sort of instrument binnacle in there with the old idiot lights in there. Big swept back bars, of course. If you come along the, the side of the bike, you've got your feet forward footrests, of course, the old hinging up again, but they've gone to a lot of trouble. They put this cover over the gearbox to make it look completely different and very retro. And even the pillion footrest hangers, they look like old fashioned toolboxes that used to fit in the old rigid frames, but that just covers purely for the hangers. Put twin shocks on there. And this back wheel here, this is a 15 incher with a massive tire on it, big 170 section rear tire. Giving it a big, long, low cruiser look. And just look at the size of those exhaust pipes. Massive pipes there coming into these long, long silencers and slash cut in typical sort of um, custom fashion. Now the standard cruiser costs you 6349 or thereabouts, but because it doesn't stop there, you can dress up your custom cruiser. All these, look at these petrol tanks, Union Jack, there's one round the corner there with the stars and stripes on, and that's only the start of it. 
This one's been dressed up in very American fashion. Look at this, the old highway patrol type screen, even spot lamps either side, crash bars, footboards down there, leather panniers, backrests there for your pillion passenger, absolutely everything. So this is only the beginning of things. When will it all end? Here's a new model now from BMW, the F650 CS, or the Scarva. Scarva is the model name of this bike. What does the CS stand for? Well, the C stands for carving because apparently, and I don't know much about it myself, when you're skiing, you carve through the snow on the slopes. And the S stands for street. So the idea is that you can carve through the streets. 650cc motor. It's the same engine that they use in their F650. But this one, strangely, has a belt drive and it's the first time BMW ever used a belt drive. Now the F650, the other version, uses the same engine as a chain drive and that's the only BMW that has a chain drive. So it seems to me like this is their guinea pig bike, if you like. But it's designed to tempt people into biking. It's a very user-friendly sort of thing. Not the sort of thing that you could go touring Europe on, it's not designed for that. The seat's very, very low, everything's very user-friendly. This is not a petrol tank, the petrol tank is down here below the seat. This is a kind of cubbyhole, really, it's got a tank bag in this one. It also comes with a hard sort of case on there so you can put your bits and pieces on. So there's a, a number of different options for that. But as I say, they are trying to bring people into biking, people that haven't been in biking before. And what they've also launched with this, very good I think is an insurance package which means that if you're over 25 they will insure you on this fully comp for 200 quid and if you're under 25 they'll insure you fully comp on this for 400 quid which is damn cheap if you ask me the bike itself costs 5,400 pounds that's for the basic bike and I have to say I think they've been very bold because it's an unusual looking machine it's quite an unusual style some people will love it some will hate it and the colour options are, well, slightly unusual. They're not your sort of standard reds, blues and whites. You know, they're sort of strange shades, if you like. But uh, it probably do quite well. And with those insurance discounts available, I'm sure it'll sell in quite good numbers. This beautiful bit of kit here belongs to a rider by the name of Stefano Perugini, and he is a hero in my eyes. As all 125 GP racers are, he's fantastic. He lives life to the edge when he's racing his bike. And this is an Idlejet GP machine for 2001. But it's not this I wish to show you. If you'd like to just follow me, cameraman, because over here, this is what you may know Idlejet for, and that is their fantastic Formula 125 scooters. It's a cracking bit of kit. In this case, very fancy paint jobs. But over here, in a very fancy paint job as well, is this, a new model called the Jet Set. This is very nicely done in its Italian livery, but you can buy it in plain silver and black and just like everything else, quite subtle. 50cc version will cost you 1750 quid and I had the pleasure of riding one recently. I've got to admit it was uh, decidedly slow. In fact, I'm sure I was overtaken by a young man on a skateboard and in fact, something flew by me and I believe it was a milk float. But then again, it was a legally restricted 30 mile an hour scooter, but they do a 125 version, a four stroke 125, which will obviously be very great fun, economical to use, and that will cost you a few hundred pounds more. Maybe I can arrange a test ride on the 125 one day. Yes, the Ducati 998R, the new one with the tester stretcher engine, the engine that won them this year's World Superbike Championship. So what's new, you might say? It looks very similar, doesn't it? Way back to 1993 when this first came out, but it's such a beautiful shape. Well, it is to me, very distinctive. Why change it? What they have done, the fairing is more aerodynamic now. They've lost the vents on the side there, and what you've got is some little vents up here to let the heat out with tiny little grills there. Other than that, it looks fairly standard. The engine is, in fact, up 11 brake horsepower on the old one. This is the standard one, the Biposto. You can move up a slot onto this one, which is the S version, and on that one you've still got your shower forks, Olin's rear suspension, but you do get some carbon fibre bits, such as the little panel under there, the belly pan. Now the S engine produces a bit more power, another 13 brake horsepower, taking it to up to 136, but it's still that tester stretcher engine. And then if you're not satisfied with that one, you can come to the 998R. This one again has got a carbon fibre belly pan, but this one also has Olin's forks. Nice trick Olin's forks with that titanium nitride slider there. And it's got Brembo race type calipers as well, so that's up spec. Got the Olin's rear again. Altogether a very tasty machine. There's again sharing the same engine though, but it's, uh, it's nice, isn't it? The new standard 998 will cost you £11,000, the S £13,000 and the R £17,000.
There's certainly a huge market today for the naked or semi-naked retro style bikes, sort of naked street bikes with huge amounts of power. I suppose Suzuki started the ball rolling a few years ago when they introduced the big 1200cc Bandit. Then here last year at the show, Yamaha launched their big phaser, again, naked sort of street bike with a 1000cc R1 engine. So I suppose it's only logical that Honda would join in and they've done it with this, the new 900cc Hornet. Quite a sort of logical step really for Honda. You'll all know about the 600cc Hornet, that uses a CBR 600 motor. So yes, you've guessed it, the 900 Hornet uses a Fireblade engine. But it's an old Fireblade engine actually, 1998 Fireblade engine that's, that sits in there, but now it's fuel injected, whereas the 98 blade actually used carburettors. Power's down slightly from the 98 blade, around 109 brake horsepower on this, and the phrase that we always hear with this style of bikes, it's been retuned for more mid-range power. How many times have you heard that before? But don't be fooled into thinking that this is a tame beast. It is not. It is a wild machine. You can have huge amounts of fun on this. In fact, you can very easily get yourself into an awful lot of trouble on one of these, believe me, without really trying. Now, I said at last year's show that the big 1000cc phaser would be at the top of every stunt rider's shopping list. Well, here now from Honda is another one that you can add to that list. Still to come on our bike show special, Kawasaki's new ZZR 1200, the very latest Honda Fireblade, Harley Davidson's V-Rod and Aprilia's concept bike, the Blue Marlin. Now a brand new rear end and a very distinctive rear end and I think you're going to see quite a few of these because this is the new ZZR12, the replacement for some say the long in the tooth ZZR 1100 but the ZZR 1100 was fantastically popular. The first of the megabikes introduced way back in 1990, 174 miles an hour was quite something then and it still is now. But anyway, it's been a popular bike, this is its replacement, so up to 1200cc and it's got a brand new frame. Again, they've sharpened up the steering angle a bit, altered the rake as well, just to quicken the steering. I've actually got one of these, one of the earlier ones, and it does feel a bit pudding-like now, but this, they've speeded it up. I look forward to a ride on this. What else have they done to it? Got a nice new dashboard in here. Bang up to date. Not a digital display for the Speedo, though, which is a bit of a disappointment. And in there, a very crowded up scale. That's in kilometres, but even the milometre one will actually be quite crowded, I reckon. But it looks very neat. What else have they done? They're going to make panniers for it. Um, going to be available next year. Integrated side cases for it. But they've lost those little bungee hooks that you used to have, that you used to flip out, which were very, very good. But they've now got some decent grab rails. Having said all that, I think it's still going to be a bit of a bargain. It's going to be around about 7,600. Can't be bad. I think one of the best looking models at last year's show was the CBR 600 Sport in its red and black colour scheme. Honda obviously agree because that's just one of the colour options available for the new CBR 900 Fireblade and doesn't it look fantastic? The blade has really become a biking icon since it was launched way back in 1992 and this is now the sixth different version in its 10 year history. Power is up only slightly though on the new blade to a claimed 148 brake horsepower but we've now got an extra 25cc so 954cc is now the size of this new Fireblade engine. They've also managed to shed 2 kilograms off the weight so it tips the scales now at 168 kilograms which is actually slightly less, only about 4 kilograms less than Yamaha's new R1. And if you're into fancy engineering just take a look at that swing arm down there sort of NSR 500 style swing guard with them big cutouts in it, an absolute work of art, beautiful thing that. The biggest improvement as far as I'm concerned though on this and perhaps the most important for me is the looks of it, quite simply the looks, it just looks so much better, I was never really in love with last year's Fireblade but I think this one looks fantastic and I have to say I'm getting quite attached to this white and blue colour scheme, I think it looks good. The screen is a little bit higher now so perhaps a little slightly better wind protection not that you really worry about that uh, something like that on a sports bike but uh, definitely a huge improvement over previous fire blades uh, whatever you say mechanically and aesthetically as well it should be in the showroom around about february and if you'd like to put your name down for one then be prepared to fork out eight thousand six hundred and ninety nine pounds hiding behind that fancy new model fire blade that paul's been talking about is this the honda silverwing now i don't know if you recall but last year we did actually bring this one to you on two wheels but it was in sort of a plastic form it wasn't a bike that was produced it was pre-production you could look at it but you couldn't touch it well now not only can you touch it you can even buy one because they have been available now for a couple of months it's a beautiful bit of kit 
a fancy one myself. It's in the region of the Bergman type machines, the big X9 by Piaggio, the Majesty, or even bigger than that now from Yamaha, you've got their T Max. That's the sort of concept, big super scooter. This will cost you just a little, not a lot, over 6,000 quid. See that? Water pump impeller. It's cut away, admittedly, like the rest of this engine. But see this, four valve cylinder head, double overhead camshaft. So a water-cooled engine with some fitting there, it's a V-twin. It's 60 degree, it's not 45 degree. What is it? It's a Harley. It's the engine from the new V-Rod. And get this, this one revs to 9,000 RPM, which is a big rev limit for a Harley. It also produces 115 brake horsepower. So there's something very, very special about this. That is sitting in here, this V-Rod. I'm sure you've seen the photos of it. In the flesh, it is an absolutely amazing looking bike. I don't know where to start with it really, there's so many bits to it, it's so unharley really, a hell of a lot of technology. You've got these big solid disc aluminium wheels, which personally I'm not too keen on, but, so I'll leave those alone where they are. But look at this brushed aluminium front mug guard. But see these forks, we've been talking about performance cruisers, but just look at the way these forks are kicked out. The forks are actually kicked out more than the angle of the headstock. You probably can't see it here, but take it from me, they're kicked out sort of that much, the headstock is there. And as I understand it, it still handles extremely well. Massive radiator down there with these brushed aluminium edges to it. But just moving back now to this frame, there's fantastic curves on this frame. I nearly said angles then. But see the way it's tucked in here, nothing special about that one. But when it comes around the back of the cylinder head there and out here, it comes this way and it's bent backwards and it's bent this way. And they did that, they've actually used high pressure water to actually form the tubing around there. So they put a, a basic bend in it and then pump water in it to fill it out. So there's no wrinkles on that tubing. Absolutely amazing. They did a similar thing with the exhaust system. If you can see it, these big sweeping pipes here, they used an elastomer in there. So again, they formed the pipes and then pumped it full of this elastomer to actually smooth out all the curves and get this absolutely unique sort of one-off custom shape. What else has it got? A pretend petrol tank, this brushed aluminium again, beautiful shaped on there, really sculpted. But down there is the petrol tank, not up here. This is just a cover. And you come right back to this little seat here, very low down, of course another big disc wheel at the back and this beautifully aluminium shaped tail there all together a fantastic bit of kit absolutely amazing the v-rod is actually available now it's going to cost you a pound under fourteen thousand pounds but to be honest you're going to be lucky if you can get one because i understand they've sold the whole lot but if you're interested go around to your harley dealer and get your name down now Yamaha have kindly give me a leaning post because my legs are very very tired walking around the show the leaning post in this case is a brand new machine from Yamaha, only just available to you to buy. In fact, they haven't established exactly what price. They say it's going to be a little over £6,000. What is it, we ask? Well, it's this, the BT1100, commonly known as the Bulldog. I wonder if it's got a bit of a bite. Well, the power output of this is actually only 65 bhp, but its bottom end grunt would, would be absolutely massive. It's a proper toy. I would think it's a stunts machine. I don't really know what it's supposed to be, to be honest with you, what category it fits in. It's obviously a retro style machine. It's a shaft drive, now there's a bit of something different. It's a monoshock system, and that is produced by a company called Saks, hiding down there. That's quite unusual for Yamaha, using a German shock absorber. The engine, V-twin, single overhead cam, and the bike's concept, well, I reckon it looks a little bit like a Buell, Engine looking not dissimilar to a Harley Davidson. In fact, I'm really not sure what it's supposed to be. Sort of Ducati Monsterish. Whatever, rather nice. And it's the type of bike that you would definitely buy some bolt on bits for it. Well, what Yamaha have done today is kindly shown us a sort of pre made version over here. Here's one we made earlier. What they've done is they've sort of designed some bolt on accessories for you to buy on a bike like that to give you an idea of how it could end up. Not every item will be available but very, very soon, most will. And of course, I'm sure aftermarket accessory people will be making all sorts of bits and pieces for this to bolt onto it. Now, what you can't see, but I can see clearly in front of me, is the underside of a new bike. What is it? It's a Prillia's Blue Marlin concept bike. 
Now you don't very often see the Aprilia engine, especially the RSV engine, because it's always covered by plastic in all those variants that Aprilia do with it. But here it is in all of its glory and a very neat engine it looks too. But look at it, it's in this incredibly compact frame, tubular steel down the front, very, very slim radiator down there that you can hardly see. It's a composite frame because it's got these forged aluminium brackets at the back holding this swinging arm with a single shock there buried under there. See that specially tooled up aluminium shock absorber? Very nice. This looks almost an aftermarket accessory. Tubular aluminium, neatly crafted, eccentric adjusters for the rear chain there. Look at these nice exhaust systems. All very one-off concept by nicely spun aluminium or spun stainless steel by the looks of it. Nice tank. The tank really takes you back to sort of 60s style British uh, cafe racer stuff, Tritons and all the rest of it sitting on those top rails, but it really is a trick looking bike. In the flesh, it looks a treat, and that front little nose cone really makes this something very, very special. And on Two Wheels next week, Jeff returns to Ulton Park to catch up with rookie 600 racer Nigel May, the man we featured early in the season. Just how has it all been? And we've got some top tips on motorcycle security. <laughs>